Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Java interview questions. That is, what are the main features of Java programming language? So these are the features why Java is kind of popular in the market, guys. So the main features that we have in Java are this listed down ones, okay? Whatever I have listed down here are the main features of Java. I'll cover one by one for you. So first thing is Java is an object oriented programming language. Okay. Object oriented. So in Java, we have object oriented concepts like class, object, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and many other uh, miscellaneous object oriented uh, associated things like, you know, coupling, cohesion, association, aggregation, and composition. So these are the object oriented concepts of Java. Object oriented thing is the main feature of Java guys. Okay, Java first thing is object oriented feature. Second thing is the second main feature of Java programming languages. Java is platform independent. Okay. So in Java, we have something known as JVM Java virtual machine. Okay. Because of which Java is a platform independent. That means you can write your code in one machine and the same code you can run in other machines. You don't have to rewrite the code again in other machines. In one machine having a different operating system, you can write a code and the same code you can copy and paste in other machines having different operating systems and configurations and you can run them if they are supported by Java. Okay. And Java is platform independent programming language and uh, this platform independent uh, nature is possible because of this JVM guys. Okay. In Java, when you install, when you download and install Java for Windows machine, JVM for such Windows machine will be downloaded. When you download and install Java for Mac machine, JVM related to that Mac machine will be downloaded and installed. Okay. So when you download and install Java for Linux machine, JVM for that Linux machine will get downloaded and installed along with the Java in that Linux machine. Okay. So JVM, what it does is it understands the byte code guys. Okay. So the byte code, which is an intermediate code after compiling the Java code. Okay. After the Java code gets compiled by a Java compiler that Java compiled code will contain the byte code. Who can understand the byte code? JVM. JVM will convert that byte code into the machine level code. That the machine in which that particular JVM is there, right? It can convert that byte code into the native machine level code to run it. Okay. Every machine has its own JVM. So whether you write Java in this machine or that machine doesn't matter. Ultimately, this Java code will be converted to byte code. In every machine, there will be a, uh, appropriate JVM for that particular machine, which can convert this byte code into the machine code. Hence, Java is platform independent. Okay. Then third main feature of the Java programming language is Java is simple and familiar guys. Why Java is simple and familiar? Because most of the developers that are there in the market, okay, have started their learning of programming journey with C based languages like C, C++ language. Java syntax matches with this C based language like C++. Hence, most of the developers that are there in the market have first started their learning of the Java pro uh, programming journey, okay, with uh, by using the C or C++ language. Hence, they can easily understand uh, Java programming language. They feel like they already know this programming language because earlier they have gone through the C or C++ kind of languages. Hence, Java is simple and familiar guys to understand. The next one is the next main feature of Java programming languages. Java is secured. Okay. Java is secured one guys. secured. Why it is secured? So whatever the applications you develop with Java, you can create or develop as a developers of Java, Java, they can develop mission critical and very large sized application, very sensitive applications they can create and that too with security involved. Okay. In a secured manner, they can develop such kind of very big applications guys. Java sticks the security, uh, an, an, an important aspect guys. Okay. So how that is possible in Java? It's possible, uh, by these two or more things. Okay. There are more than two things, but the main things I have listed down here. The first main thing is that before the JVM runs this byte code or converts this byte code into the native machine level code to run it before that happens, before the JVM does that, the byte code will be verified to see if there are any particular vulnerabilities or, you know, malicious byte code kind of stuff is there. If any malicious uh, stuff is detected in this byte code, JVM is not going to run it. Okay. 
before the JVM runs it, the verification of the bytecode, it is secured, uh, whether it is secured or not, uh, are there any malicious code or not, will be completely checked. So this is one security process. And other way of uh, Java taking care of the security is, there's something known as an inbuilt Java security manager. In Java, there is a inbuilt Java security manager. So using this uh, inbuilt security manager, policies will be created to restrict the access to sensitive areas of the particular software that is being developed in the, in the using Java programming. And also it will restrict the uh, access to the unauthorized, okay? It will restrict the unauthorized access. Only authorized things can be accessible. Unauthorized will be rejected from accessing, okay? Such kind of policies can be created with the inbuilt feature of Java and this customization can be done with this uh, Java security manager and all those stuff because of which uh, security becomes a main, another main feature of Java programming language, okay? And next one is Java is kind of robust and reliable, okay? Why we say that Java is a robust and reliable? Because of all these things. A few of things are already covered here. You see why Java is robust and reliable means it's platform independent, okay? And it's secured, already told you it's secured. It's multi-threaded guys, okay? In Java, okay, at a time, multiple threads can run. Programs can run multiple threads where each and every thread will do one action. Okay, simultaneously, multiple actions will be performed. Multiple codes will run and uh, simultaneously, multiple actions will be performed with the help of this multi-threaded uh, nature, which will incorporate multi-tasking thing into the Java. Okay, uh, then strongly typed. Uh, another, another reason why Java is robust and reliable is it's strongly typed because all the variables in data should and must be declared with some data type based on the type of the data that you want to store into the variables. We have to declare that variables because of which Java is strongly typed. There is no room for, uh, you know, a misunderstanding of operations and all, okay? So with uh, compatible data, the operations will be performed because we know that in which variable, which data type is there and all those stuff, okay? And in Java, there is no pointers concept, guys. Unlike C language, in Java, there is no pointers concept because of which memory leak won't happen or any other random errors because of the complexity of pointers concept in C language, right? Which is not there in Java because of that elimination of this pointers concept in Java, right? That uh, errors will not come, okay? Complexity problem is not there because of the complexity errors may come. That complexity is not there, so errors will not come. And you know, uh, uh, and you know, memory leaks won't happen, okay? Since the concept is not there. And apart from that, Java has this, uh, Java is robust and reliable because it has automatic memory management. Cleaning of the unused memory is automatically done in Java because of the concept known as garbage collection, which will automatically manages a memory, guys, okay? Garbage collection. Garbage collection in Java automatic, automatically manages the memory because of which, uh, usually memory, memory utilization will be in a better way, okay? In an optimized way. And exception handling mechanism is there in uh, Java which makes the Java robust and reliable, okay? So where there are some checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. Checked exceptions are the exceptions which are identified by the compiler before you run the program. Uh, the, uh, the compiler will say that there's a possibility of a runtime error if you don't fix this particular problem, okay? That is checked exception. And uh, similarly, we have unchecked exceptions in Java uh, where, you know, compiler will not detect that such kind of uh, things are going to happen, but, you know, uh, when you run the code uh, in the runtime, you'll you'll find that uh, this code is uh, resulting in some exception. But ultimately, Java has a exception handling mechanism to handle this checked and unchecked exceptions uh, using try catch blocks and all exceptions can be handled. Okay, and because of which uh, error proneness will be reduced in Java, and Java becomes more robust and reliable. Comprehensive li library Java has very big and large extensible library guys. Okay, very big library guys because of which. Okay, uh, different type of applications of mission critical, very big size, different types, anything can be created with uh, Java guys. Okay, very comprehensive. It's not a simple library that Java has for uh, this library will be used by developers to build very good applications guys. Okay, and many more guys because of many of these factors. Uh, one of the main features of the Java is Java is robust and reliable guys. Okay, and then high performance. Next aspect of uh, next main feature of the Java is Java. High performance, okay? Java is known for high performance, guys. How Java is high performance? Because there's something known as JIT compilation. I have to write in capital letters, guys. J-I-T in capital letters. JIT stands for just-in-time compilation, okay? JIT means just-in-time compilation. JIT compilation is part of this JVM, guys. As you already know the, uh, you know, use of JVM, right? JVM will convert the bytecode into the machine-level code. 
that native machine level code, that machine in which the JVM is available. In order to run the in order to run the code, JVM has to convert the byte code into the machine level code. But this JVM will use its own inbuilt uh, interpreter, which will scan one by one line of this byte code and convert that byte code into the native machine level code, machine understandable code. But uh, that will take a lot of time. So JVM has one more component apart from interpreting the line by line of byte code. JVM also includes something known as JIT compilation. JVM takes the advantage of interpretation of line by line. At the same time, it also uses something known as JIT compilation, which identifies the patterns, the byte code. And uh, if there are some predefined patterns that JIT compilation can understand, it will sim dynamically convert that uh, byte code into the machine level code in a faster way. By using the utilization of this interpretation, combination of interpretation and JIT compilation, where patterns will be identified and converted dynamically into the machine level code, JVM will be able to do it a bit faster. Okay, That uh, conversion of the byte code into the machine level code to run the code will become faster and because of which the performance of the, the software will be increased. Okay. And uh, I already told you here, as part of robust and reliable, multi-threaded, Java is multi-threaded, the same thing here, guys, okay? So these are the main features of Java, guys. These are the main features of Java, object-oriented, platform-independent, simple and familiar, secure, robust and reliable, high-performance, multi-threaded. So hope, guys, you got the answer for this question. So that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.